Here are the installation steps for bonding Sentinel PVC membranes to the field surface of a roof using Sentinel S bonding adhesive. First, you should know that the PVC membranes that can be bonded using Sentinel S bonding adhesive are bare backed. They are reinforced with an enhanced polyester or fiberglass reinforcement and are available in two thicknesses, 1.5 millimeters or 2 millimeters. Before starting work, make sure that the environmental conditions are acceptable. Note that the temperature must be a minimum of 4 Celsius while applying these adhesives. Make sure the substrate is dry, clean, and free of any debris, oil, grease, or dirt. It's also important to know that PVC is incompatible with bitumen. Any contact between these two materials must therefore be avoided. Unroll the membrane in place on the substrate in order to dissipate the tensions accumulated during manufacturing and to facilitate its installation. In order to properly position the membranes, you must take into consideration that the sides and end laps must be at least 75 millimeters. The corners of the end laps must be cut to limit over thicknesses. The membrane below the overlap should be cut at an angle while the corner of the membrane above the overlap should be slightly rounded. Now that the membranes are in place, fold them back on themselves in preparation for applying the adhesive. Beforehand, hand mix thoroughly the contents of the pail until the homogeneous mixture is obtained. Do not pour the adhesive directly onto the substrate Instead, use a solvent-resistant roller with a minimum of 3 eighths of an inch. Apply the adhesive to the back of the bare PVC membrane and to the field surface substrate. Refer to the coverage rate indicated on the technical data sheet to know the quantity to apply. Be careful not to apply adhesive to the overlaps as they will be hot air welded. In humid conditions and when the temperature is near the dew point, condensation may form on the surfaces due to the cooling that occurs as the solvent in the adhesive evaporates. Check that there is no condensation before proceeding with the installation. Once the adhesive is dry but still tacky, lay the membrane on the substrate. Apply pressure over the entire membrane with a heavy roller to achieve full and even adhesion. Fasteners might be required at the base of the parapets or upstands. Depending on job site conditions, fasteners can be installed horizontally on the field surface as shown in the video. They can also be installed vertically at the base of the parapet using a metal fastening bar, as in this illustration. Now, let's see how to treat membrane overlaps. The use of a welding cart and an electric hot air welder will be required. First of all, we recommend that you perform test welding each time your welding equipment is stopped and restarted, or when there is a change in climatic conditions. To do so, turn on your device and wait until it reaches the desired temperature. Use membrane scraps and weld them together. Once the sample has cooled, pull the two pieces of membrane apart. A satisfactory weld is produced when the PVC uniformly delaminates from the reinforcing fabric and has a minimum width of 38 millimeters. Before welding the overlaps, make sure they are clean and uncontaminated. Clean them as needed with a non-greasy cleaner. You can now weld all overlaps using an electric hot air welding cart. Use the hot air welder for tighter spots and details. Check the quality of your welds by sliding a probe along all joints. If the tool penetrates a joint, lift up that section and heat it again using an electric hot air welder. Then use the tool to firmly seal the joint in place. 
If you feel that the zone is still not well sealed, weld a piece of membrane to cover it. At intersections of more than three layers of PVC membranes, weld Sentinel T-joint patches. That's it. Those are the installation steps for bonding Sentinel PVC membranes to the field surface of a roof using Sentinel-S bonding adhesive.